Hey everyone, welcome on board to the CyberPod and we are the cybersecurity community of Slip. I'm Vihano Devela. I'm Triashi Silva and we will be co-hosting today. So Triashi, what do you think about the current situation? We are actually forced to work from home and most of the time we are working remotely. What is your view on this? Well, Vihan, my experience was pretty much good initially because I enjoyed the flexibility that working from home allows. And I love the fact that I get to wear cozy clothes and pet my mm-hmm. dog whenever I want. However, now it's been like one and a half years I'm stuck at home. And it's I'm feeling like pretty much lonely and I feel like I'm more vulnerable to the internet more than ever. So yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's of course true. Because um, we haven't gone to university physically in about one and a half years and that's pretty sad. Yes, yeah, I miss the connection. Yep, true, true. And also talking about the second um, point you told, um, actually uh, most of us are really vulnerable in the internet and a lot of people don't know how to be safe on the internet. So yes. we should address these problems. Anyways, for now, we'll keep those aside. Uh, we actually brought you guys a um, few news items from the last month. Uh, Triaj, do you want to start about it? Yes, Vihan. So this is a pretty much a good news, Vihan. Twitter has right. launched, yeah, Twitter has launched a mode to block abusive comments. So this mode is known as safety mode. Currently, this feature is available in the beta version of Twitter. And if I say a few words about this feature, Vihan, it allows users to block accounts that post abusive comments. So whoever mm-hmm. spread hate, they will be blocked in Twitter. Mm-hmm. So even though Vihan, we know that Twitter is known as a platform that supports freedom of speech, they have taken this step to prevent online harassment. So uh, do you know anything regarding cyberbullying, Vihan? Yeah, actually, um, a lot of people, you know, they bully people online and spread hate and I think this is a great great um, initiative by Twitter yeah so they tend to spread hate a lot from the internet Mm -hmm. so do you think that this is a good step to put a stop to cyberbullying yeah of course this is actually a good step and uh, I hope uh, this will continue and uh, the whole cyberbullying uh, issues will remove like uh, go down and also, yeah <clears throat> and also um so i also got a uh, news for you but um i think this uh, comes to the bad side so these about up and coming uh, uh, trojan call sova so do you actually you know what sova means no actually so sova is a russian word for owl and uh, They've uh, found this uh, Trojan in uh, August 2021 by um, Amsterdam uh, Research Group. So what this does is this uh, targets uh, banking apps, cryptocurrency wallets and shopping apps from the United States and Spain. So these are Android uh, banking Trojan. And also, so what this does is this actually steals banking credentials and session cookies. Uh, they exploit using key log keystrokes uh, and then uh, they manipulate the clipboard to uh, actually insert modified cryptocurrency ad- addresses. So they say that this is just the start and this is not uh, the full but capacity of this Trojan. And uh, what they're saying is the future plans are to actually do DDoS attacks and um, ransomware and also they want to intercept uh, two-factor authentication and in the future this is going to be fierce and a better mm-hmm. version as in a very dangerous version than this so they're planning to combine botnet capabilities and also the banking malware automation will be done and they will combine these two and uh, the trojan will be worse than this so, so our developers has planned well. Yeah. Uh, yep. Pretty much. Well. Mm-hmm. well, Vihan, that was a pretty bad news. But when you listen to this, it's an ugly news. 
दिस इज अ न्यू बॉटनेट बिहान मेरिस बॉटनेट एंड या इट हैज हिट रशियाज यंडेक्स विथ मैसिव 22 million RPS DDoS attack. So it has striked 22 million HTTP requests per second, and this powerful attack has been identified last month. So it was identified in August by an unnamed Cloudflare customer. So behind the ugliest part is that this DDoS attack has leveraged a technique called HTTP pipeline. So this technique does this. which allows a client or a web browser to open a connection to the server and make multiple requests without for wait, without waiting for each response so pretty much mm-hmm. they don't have to wait for responses uh, they can make multiple requests to the server uh, isn't this ugly news we had yeah i know right this is actually pretty bad i thought my news was bad but this goes mm-hmm. way worse than that That's what we have for this week's news. Uh, we have. I have a question for you. Why do you think that cybersecurity awareness is more important in this current situation, like the current pandemic situation? Um. Well, actually, um, I'm not the one to properly answer this question. So, guys, uh, we have got a guest for y'all, and. Uh, we will give a brief introduction about this uh, individual and i'm pretty sure that this individual will answer most of your questions so let's um introduce this uh, individual to our viewers or listeners our special guest for today has the experience in the cyber security field for over 9 years also she is a proud graduate of slate and vihan she was a cyber consultant at pwc and currently she is a data privacy manager at Wiley last but not least she is the director of the association of cyber security professionals she is none other than miss arani srinivasan rijankan welcome on board the cyber part thank you for accepting our invitation and joining with us for the first episode welcome once again ma'am um so we have a few questions for you and you know that we are working um from home and we're working virtually currently and how do you think the current pandemic has changed the threat landscape in today's world yeah so first of all thank you for inviting me to my alma mater again um so this is a good opportunity for me to meet up you all through that before saying about the change in the threat landscape mm-hmm. uh, i just want to say the cyber threat landscape is diverse so you know like we can say uh, malicious employees working from home with less supervision mm-hmm. and fewer technical control so it may be tempted to carry out a fraud or any yes. other criminal activity so the second one i can say about the cyber criminals recognize that the data mm-hmm. security measures currently in place are not fit for the purpose to prevent mm-hmm. them from making a successful cyber attacks yes so and then like we can say the activities of hacktivist you know hacktivist means who are fighting for social and yes. political issues so they are adding to the cyber security threats as well mm-hmm. and last not least about the script kiddies <laughs> so all of us when we Pretty were much. in undergraduate and all like yeah us. yeah yes obviously so the junior hackers <laughs> with less technical skills or sometimes we are testing testing out mm-hmm. the cyber attack packages which is available in the um, google or anywhere so that also like being like an threat for the organization actually they are using to improve their skills but it, it becomes like a threat right hey, but so yeah, even though they use it they don't exactly know for what purpose it was created yes and, yes mm-hmm. what is the impact it is going to give to the other party exactly yes. so mm-hmm. uh, most of these threats have intensified because of the opportunities that have arisen during this covid-19 outbreak so if you take the first 6 months in 2020 mm-hmm. which have brought about uh, unprecedented change right yes. so when uh, you know at that time the organizations have been focused on protecting their employees health and they are weathering the economic storm yes so uh, along that time it may come as an uh, no surprise that criminality has thrived and it mm-hmm. brings all this chaos within the other one and a half years 
yes. I think the, the the way that landscape was changed like this. Yes. Yes. So, ma'am, how about the awareness of the people, and is it effective for the society? Yeah. So it's really, really, really a good question because um, if you take us, the technology people who are working in the IT industry, mm-hmm. so the IT industry is the uh, most major industry which supports the other industries, right? But we can't expect the same technology knowledge from uh, the people who are working on there. So one of the reasons for this spike in cyber attack is human error. Yes. So if you take like um, companies or organization view, like from SMEs to the large enterprises, the employee is the last line. So that's why we are calling them human firewall. Mm-hmm. So even if you ask like prior to this pandemic also, there are human error. It was already there and it caused major um, chaos in the organization because they are like unknowingly or they recklessly give access to the wrong people. Mm, yes, very true. And along with this home uh, working from home new normal along with new normal this problem is even greater. So when they work from home, you know, employees may be interrupted in the work they are doing by family members or some social visitors. Mm-hmm. So these distractions can make individuals more careless. This is like about the organization and when it comes to the individuals, right? Yes. So maybe like we can say who, the people who were like an technology ignorance people who were there before mm-hmm. the pandemic. Mm-hmm. So now this pandemic push each and everyone. You can say even four years kid to the 60 plus years person, it forced them to use the digital devices and everyone uh, using the digital platforms because we have a lot of free times and youngsters obviously using their free time in the digital platform <laughs> and if you see the <laughs> students right so uh, for them rather than going to school nowadays they are using uh, this online school system yes. they are also exposed to that but then the problem comes they don't know how to be secured in the digital platform the awareness is very less because suddenly everyone being into the digital and they don't know how to how prop- how to use this properly Yes, yes. Uh, now some companies have taken control mm-hmm. measures for these threats, and yes. you know they have passed it on to their um, workers or individuals mm-hmm. who work there. Uh, yeah. Do you think that these individuals are actually cooperating? Because you know, as we know, um, mm-hmm. as Sri Lankans, we are not very good with change. So, what do you yes, think about yes. the? Um, exactly because uh, yeah. mm, mm. so as a normal human though more than the Sri Lankan uh, for a normal human to adapt to the change like we have a bit resistant on that right and particularly yes. when it comes to the Sri Lankan community and our culture obviously yes <laughs> so uh, so for the companies actually like uh, a, a small statistic for you all like 95% of cyber security breaches are happened because of this human error and mm-hmm. uh, uh, these days, there are a lot of awareness training courses or awareness training is conducted by the uh, organizations. But though that people are like being on the awareness session just for, uh, you know, they are just to attend it. For sake for attending, they are attending it and listening. But we don't know whether they practically whether they are using it or not. Implementing it or not. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. More than the individuals, if I would like, I would like to say about how this uh, companies are implementing those things, right? They actually, the IT system, they need to adapt these changes in working practices and uh, increases in human error. Uh, this can be accomplished in many ways, so mm-hmm. such as uh, incro- incorporating the timeouts in key information systems yes. or some enhancing controls to apply the 4 I four eyes principle. Do you all know what is 4 eyes principle? So that means... Mm-hmm. Um, no. It is a requirement that two individuals approve some action before okay. it uh, can be taken. Wow. So, so that kind of a principle they can apply that, and uh, they can enforce the segregation of duties or automated controls. So that is called digital empathy. So mm-hmm. these should be implemented inside the companies, and most of the companies are practicing these things these yes. days. And uh, moreover, like I can give a small example. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Nowadays, the companies, they do not check that personal devices are occupied with standard security protections because, um, you know, um, in a physical environment, 
most of the employers given a desktop computers for the employees yes so when it comes to this pandemic sometimes they allow to use the pyod that means their own device yes, they can bring device. their own, yeah own device so in that case companies are thinking okay by giving the vpn connection virtual private network it is secure not like that right securely they can go to the office network but we don't know how they are maintaining their own devices mm-hmm. so for that we can say employees should be provided with the uh, license to antivirus and malware softwares so that is the one thing and then um, continuously the company has to conduct the awareness campaign by adding how to respond for the phishing emails how to report the phishing emails yes i right? think ma'am, so ma'am, uh, with the current pandemic phishing emails are very um, uh, open yes <laughs> exactly because all of us we just quickly uh, click whatever the link comes with you know coronavirus update or about the vaccination programs like because it's kind of like it manipulate our emotions so we can say emotional mm-hmm. manipulation is there yes. so they are so like without the second thought we are ready to click and see the um, details so that actually uh, direct us to a bigger phishing problems yeah mm-hmm. So yeah these are the small, some controls that they can apply and some companies are applying those things now coronavirus update or about the vaccination programs mm-hmm. so like because it's kind of like it manipulate our emotions so we can say emotional mm-hmm. manipulation is there yes. so they are so like without the second thought we are ready to click and see the um, details so that actually uh, direct us to a bigger phishing um, problems yeah mm-hmm. so yeah these are the small, some controls that they can apply and some companies are applying those things now mm-hmm. mm. yep yeah. mm-hmm. i and think uh, yeah go ahead Tria. yes we can you can go ahead all right so what i was going to say was um we were we i think slowly progressing towards that secure side of the um exactly internet. yeah yeah slow and steady <laughs> <laughs> true and ma'am what is our duty as cyber security students in order yes. to assist the society yeah okay so let me know like both of you are from the student community so what yes. kind of advantage you are having when you have the power of technology we know the vulnerabilities and yes we know how to adapt to it and exactly. react to it yes yes so because when the technology at your fingers finger tips right so you see yourself and the world in a different aspect and you know what kind of fun breaches are there how to protect yourself so now the thing is how to build a culture of security in the community yes right? so yes. as you all are good in technology you should think about your home environment your neighborhood and your community and you have to give the awareness to them Mm-hmm. And like if i'm saying a simple example so these days our parents so they some parents are very new to this one so like uh, saying the truth about the whatsapp uh, messages they are quickly sharing yes. that yes. everything, everyone, everything right? they get they they <laughs> want to uh, yeah, share and, uh, yeah yeah <laughs> give yes. information to the others as well they just want to share it and check whether it's true and everything they just go yes. with it because they don't they don't know how to uh, to the fact checking of that but as a uh, cyber community students we know that So why don't we teach them? It is like upside down. Normally parents teach the kids, but they say like we can help them, right? We say mm-hmm. okay, don't click all the links. Think before you click it, and don't mm-hmm. share that one with among all your relatives and all because it goes like it, it. It is going to be a digital pandemic, right? Yes. <laughs> so we are saying like don't spread the virus by the, please stay at home. The same thing. Plus you can say it is a digital pandemic. If you are just like, sharing uh, all these fake. Yeah. Yes, it's like uh, saying sanitize your devices. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that, that that's a good um, uh, wording that you used. <laughs> so um, <laughs> this kind of a thing we can do. And other thing is like there are organizations and authorities who are conducting this awareness to all the rural pla- rural places and everywhere for the school kids, for the yes. woman and child and all those things. So why don't you take a part of them? 
mm-hmm. you can be a part of them and you also can participate and give your own experience to the people who are never explored to this uh, technical stuff so mm-hmm. who are very scared to use it because people now knows there are a lot of cyber crimes happen there yes. are a lot of problems in this one but they don't know how to react and they don't know how to protect themselves yes so you have to give your own education to them and as a community we have to build ourselves and together we have to get uh, reduce these uh, cyber crimes and conflict. yes so, and also one more thing um we should actually um uh, educate the people regarding their passwords and tell exactly, them not really yes. um, yarn point share. yarn point <laughs> show them to <laughs> people and um, a lot of people can guess it by talking to them actually <laughs> yes the yes because yeah to add that one that that is why we said about the security questions right yes so yes so selecting like which primary school you study in or <laughs> who is your favorite teacher so a very very uh, normal questions we are selecting for the security questions mm-hmm. and by just have a casual chat we get to know the answers yes hmm so you can even teach them you know about the two factor authentication yes Very you said like okay, you should have a very uh, strong password. And then you have to say like okay, um, sing your uh, mobile device with that. So there will mm. be a one-time password will be there. And, and we have to we have to inform them not to share that one-time password with anyone. Yeah, exactly, it. and <laughs> mainly don't scribble that one or write that one somewhere in somewhere. Their, you know in the notebook or something. It <laughs> yes. is also very bad. Thing. So <laughs> so those things we have to It's very basic. these things like looks like very basic for us but uh, most of the people doesn't know it yes so we do have to do that <laughs> <laughs> very true very true ma'am yeah and and i can even add something um you know about this yes. online banking activities online shopping mm-hmm. so while they are doing uh, they they don't know about the cookies right yes. <laughs> so there are a lot of cookie concerns are coming and about the mm-hmm. privacy policies so yes. we have to read it actually We do have a bad habit that without reading we are accepting everything. Yes. <laughs> really yeah, too everything we just we just click accept next next and then we go yes, on. Yes, <laughs> yes. So we should teach them how we store our details and the personal information and our preferences. So it might be if it is a third party cookies it might share with you know two to three other websites as well. So mm-hmm. that means you are giving a concern. Yes, you can uh, share my preferences. those kind of um uh, awareness is not there so we can yes. give that to them and even how to respond to scam calls hmm you now when when there are some calls are coming like if they ask okay your from your account uh, account balance is reducing now so just hmm. to stop that one can you give your card details with along with the cvv number yes so none of the bank is going to ask like that So, but and, it's also and kind also of emotional there are yeah. some people who call um, you know innocent people who who are actually um, very vulnerable to these things and they say something's wrong with your laptop and we need to fix it yes. and you need to <laughs> exactly need to. because that that is that is what we are saying like um, impersonation that means like yes like yes. kind of showing a fake thing hmm. so it like easily trap onto those things so So you can give this kind of a small, small, very basic uh, awareness to your own um, community, your own parents and sisters, brothers, or your neighborhood. So this yes. is the way that you can assist the society. Yes. Very true. Very true, ma'am. Um, ma'am, actually, um, this few minutes was actually very informative, and you know, talking to you was um, really yeah. interesting, and we learned many things actually, and. we want to thank you as the cyber security community of slip um for accepting our invitation and um giving your time out of your busy schedule for this um, podcast a very big thank you ma'am <laughs> thank you so much for inviting me so it's all for my alma mater <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot ma'am and we are very happy to thank have you. you for our first episode of our podcast <laughs> hoping to thank see you, you soon in another episode as well And with that, we have come towards the end of today's episode of the CyberPod. And I will give you a brief um, summary about what really happened today in this episode. Firstly, we spoke about the news from last month, and we categorized it as good, 
the bad and the ugly and then we got our amazing guest who actually answered our queries and actually gave us really good suggestions in order to help the society as a community triashi guys stay tuned for more podcast and follow us on facebook linkedin and medium for latest updates and with that we are in the end of our podcast and we will see you again in a month with our second episode of the cyberpod until then stay home stay safe we are the cybersecurity community of slip